In this video, I am going to show you how to make this cute giraffe block. Just a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. This block is currently the pattern exclusive to the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club. Um, when I say currently, right now it is March 15th, 2020, and it will be exclusive to the club until April 15th, 2020. So if you're seeing this video before April 15th, you can join the club and you'll get this pattern as part of your membership. It's $4 a month and you get a new pattern every month. If you're seeing this video after April 15th, 2020, and you want to get the pattern, you'll need to go to shinyhappyworld.com. Here's how to make it. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is print your pattern or trace it onto the paper side of paper-backed fusible adhesive. I use heat and bond light. And the way the giraffe lays out, there's a little bit of extra space. So I decided to also trace a pair of eyeglasses into that space. So I'm going to give one of my blocks um, some cute eyeglasses. But trace it or print it onto the paper side of the adhesive. And then you're going to rough cut all the pieces out. And rough cut means don't cut right on the line. You want to cut a little bit past the line and give yourself a little extra extra anywhere that there is a dotted line. And what that does, it allows you when you fuse it down, it means that the adhesive goes all the way to the edge because now the adhesive is actually going past the edges of all these pieces. So when you cut it on the line, it goes right up to the edge. So just to talk you through all the pieces we have for the giraffe, because the giraffe has a lot of pieces. You're going to take a lighter color and that is going to be for the head, the top part of the head, the neck, and the larger, the outer part of the two ears. And then you're going to use a slightly darker fabric, um, and that is going to be for the nose, the ossicones, turn them this way so you can see them, the ossicones, the smaller inner ears, and the spots. And then you're going to need a third piece just of solid black, for the eyes and the nostrils. So once you get those pieces rough cut and fused to the back side of the fabric, you're going to want to cut them out as clean cuts. And either before or after you cut them out, you do want to make sure to transfer the markings for the face. So you want to transfer the nostrils and the mouth and also the eyes on the headpiece. And I do that by holding it up to a window with the light shining through it. So I hold it up with the paper touching the window, the light shining through it. You can see the lines through the fabric and I draw just inside any applique pieces like the eyes or the nostrils and I draw right on the line for the mouth because I'm going to stitch directly over that line. So that is the prep work for all of the pieces and then you're going to cut out some clean cuts. And this is an example of a clean cut. So this is that same headpiece that I was showing you before. You cut right on the straight lines and you cut a little bit of extra seam allowance wherever there's a dotted line. And those are pieces that are going to tuck behind other pieces. So this one is going to tuck behind the round nose piece. So the next thing you're going to do is get them First of all, I've, I've already quilted this block. The quilt as you go method that I use has me quilting the background fabric just to the batting. And I'll link to a whole workshop that shows you the quilt as you go method that I use. But you get that uh, quilted to the batting and then we're going to peel off the paper backing and start arranging these pieces. Okay, I always like to start with the bottom piece and get it lined up with the edge of the block. My background fabric is extending a little bit past here. Let me fold that under so it's not, so you can see it more clearly. That's actually where the batting ends. So I want to make the edge of my piece here line up with the edge of the batting that's underneath this block. And that's actually gonna get hidden in the seam allowance later. So um, I want that to go right up to the edge. So I start with the neck. And then I've got the face piece, the mouth, the nose piece, and that overlaps the neck a little bit. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to tuck the top part of the head behind the nose bit. And I just lift that up a little bit to make sure that I've got 
enough of a seam allowance that nothing is going to come loose there. You want between a half or between a quarter inch and an eighth of an inch. Um, I wouldn't do any less than an eighth of an inch. There we go. And then I'm going to tuck some ears behind his head. We start with the big ear pieces. And then I'm going to put in the darker ear pieces. And then, let's see, let's do his oscones. Do this one here. And they both go at the top of his head. This one up here a little bit more. Now I'm going to put in his eyes because I like it when they have eyes. It makes their face really come to life. Then I'm going to give him a couple of nostrils and I just cover up those spots that I drew there. And finally, I'm going to put his spots in place. You could trace the position of the spots if you want to on the neck, but it's really, it's not like the eyes where it's really important where they go, just as long as the spots end up on his neck somewhere. All right, so now he's got all of his pieces in place. Take a good look at it. Make sure you like where it go, everything is. In fact, I've decided I want the ears to go up just a little bit higher here. All right, that's better. So now I'm going to take it over to the ironing board. I'm going to fuse it all down and I'm going to outline everything and then I'll bring it back here and show you how it looks after the outline stitching is done. And I'll kind of talk you through the path that I follow with that outline stitching. Okay, here he is all finished and I'm just going to walk you through the path I took to outline him. When I outline, I try and do it in a way that there's as little stopping and starting as possible. So I started right uh, on the outside of his little mouthpiece here, right outside this line here. And I went around once, twice, three times. I like to go over it three times just using a normal thread. It gives me a thick line, but it also gives me, um, try and zoom this in a little bit. It gives me a kind of a scribbly, sketchy look. I want it to kind of look like a drawing in a sketchbook. So I finished three rounds around his mouth. And then I overlapped a little bit and went up around his head once. And then on the second pass, that's when I like to take care of all the appendages, anything sticking out. So I came up a second time, went to the top part of his ear, and then around the larger part of the ear, I went one, two, three. And then I continued again up his head until I got to the top part of this inner ear, and I went one, two, three. Then I continued up past the first, the to the second side of the first ossicone and went around once, twice, three times. And then on and past the base of the second ossicone, one, two, three. And then continued around past the ear to the bottom edge of the big ear, one, two, three. And then past to the bottom edge of the little ear, the inner ear, one, two, three and then on down to the mouth again. And then once more for a third pass all the way around the top of the head. And that does lead to a little bit of doubling up like at the base of the ossicones and at the base of the ear, but you can't tell the difference between three rows and four rows of stitching. So that works out really well. Then I came down here and I took care of his neck and I started here, one, two, three, came across the bottom. You're not gonna see this stitching here because it's going to be sewn to the next block but I uh, went one, two, three over this lower spot and then continued on down here and then one, two, three and tie it off. Now there's a bunch of stuff, there's no help for it, you've got to stop and tie some knots. So I ran around, around each eye, each nostril. I only go around the eyes and the nostrils once because it's black on black and you can't see it anyway. And then for the mouth, I did three times on the mouth and then three times around each of the remaining spots and that takes care of him. So to talk a little bit about fabrics before I show you another colorway, this is using the, um, the Rainbow Sherbet background bundles for the pastel blue in the background. And all of the fabrics that I used in the giraffe itself 
are from the Warm Neutrals fabric bundle. So now let me show you another more playful version. I love how this guy turned out. So for him, I used to, to keep with the fabrics for a second, also rainbow sherbet for the background, and then I used the gingham play fat quarter bundle for um, the gingham, that kind of hand-painted gingham for his head and neck, and I used one of the dots fat quarter bundle uh, for this hash dot that's his spots and all of the darker bits, and those bright red glasses come from the rainbow brights fat quarter bundle. So to stick those glasses on, first of all, the glasses come from the Fancy Doodads pattern. It's an accessories pattern. It doesn't have any faces, but it's a huge collection of a bunch of different hats, a bunch of different glasses, uh, some mustaches, some thought bubbles, all kinds of fun little accessories that you can add, and they all come in different sizes. So for these glasses, the smallest size of this shape of frames actually fit on him, but I really liked the idea of big, giant, oversized glasses. So I picked the set of frames, the biggest set that his eye, his eyes would still show up inside the, the openings of the glasses. I did all of the stitching on the giraffe first before I fused those glasses down. Then I fused the glasses down and did the stitching around them. And I did that because it makes the stitching a lot easier. So I'm not doing a bunch of like tiny little bit of stitching here and a tiny little bit of stitching up there and this weird little bit of stitching here. It just makes things a lot easier to do the animal first and then add on any accessories. And that works for the hats and the bow ties and all of the other accessories as well. So. I love this guy with glasses. That's just too cute. And that is the pattern of the month for the Funny Faces block of the month. I will see you next month.